So there is an extension which is quite popular these days, which is called Code for I, and it allows you to use your AS400 from Visual Studio Code. So let's take a look at it and see what all features do we see on the first glance. So I've already installed the extension and I've connected to the Pub400 server, and we are already looking at the source code for the logical file which we have had created for the previous videos and see it has even given me an error that the record format that I had used was the name of that was not correct. It is also able to give us the output the job log output when you compile a logical file physical file or any object and there are a lot of other options available. So let's try to explore everything. In this video we will look only at the basic things so why to use visual studio code in the first place why not stick with our good old pn5250 environment well with time we have to change and we have to adopt the new technologies as they are created and at least if we are not even adopting we should at least look at what is available so i know that the seu has a lot of built-in functionalities you can do f4 on it you can do f1 and you'll be able to see all the information you'll get a prompt to do everything but new things can have its own benefits as well and visual studio code is an ide it is a complete integrated development environment you'll get syntax highlighting you should be able to get autocomplete and in this modern day and age of development everything all the development happens through an ide so let's see what is available yeah if you look at the github page for code for i there is a good documentation available uh, let's go through the documentation so today we will focus on the very basics so if you open the website code for i on github uh, it will first present with how to log in and how to install the visual studio code extension so before you do that you should have visual studio code so you can easily get visual studio code by just searching on the internet visual studio code and uh, you should be able to download it so visual studio code i think is maintained by microsoft and is a very popular id with a lot of features so you can install it for your operating system there are installers available for Windows, Linux, as well as Mac OS. So choose an installer as per your requirements and install it and open it. Once you do that, you have to go to the extensions tab, which is right over here, extensions. So I've searched for IBM I and I've got code for IBM I. And the creator is code for I. So if you search for code for I, then you should have got it. So install this extension in the first place and the author recommends installing the IBM I development pack also so on the home page he has mentioned what is code for IBM I so as we know that it is a development extension for VS code and uh, there's a screenshot where he is showing RPG LE development and you can see an object browser where you can see the library uh, Barry one and then you have all the source physical files and then you have the rpg src where you have the rpg source code for hello world right then there is this uh, requirements so to install code for i you need to have a server which has uh, the ssh daemon enabled and running on the as400 machine so fortunately on our pub 400 server it is already running we do not need to do anything the default port number also is uh, 2222 which he mentions in his own video so that you will need when you put in the connection details so that we will do later on so yeah so here is the place where he mentions so you search for code for IBMI or IBMI, you'll get his extension. 
support for IBMI and the recommended extension along with this IBMI development pack which we just saw over here IBMI development pack so install these two extensions and uh, once you install these extensions there would be an install button like this and once you install these extensions you should get a IBMI icon on the left bar over here and uh, I've installed a couple of other extensions so I've also installed DB2 for IBMI which we'll try to explore in one of the next videos so once you install it click on the IBMI icon so it'll open a menu like this now I've already connected that is why it is showing me all the options so initially you will not have all these options you will just have a basic uh, menu yeah so let's so connect to an IBMI this is the button that you'll get so connection name you can give basic name any name that you want host IP address will give hub400.com SSH port for hub400.com is 2222 which the author for the extension has mentioned in his own video on his YouTube channel I'm going to type my username that I have for hub400 and the password and that's it we'll connect okay so our connection is done and uh, we are presented with the first box at the top which has a links which has a lot of links for uh, various things the second box over here is the list of uh, library lists so it is a library list so it is my default library list so if i go back to my pub 400 and if i dsp libl i should be getting the same library list that i am getting on the visual studio code so binande1 qgpl qtemp and the default games 400 with pub 400 all right so it does not show the uses and the system libraries so i think they are assumed to be on the library list by default okay so the object browser is now blank and the ifs uh, browser is available and it has one item so let's expand it so we have the default uh, test.java hello world program with us and uh, yeah all your ifs directories are available you can browse so we are interested with the as400 objects and source physical files so we'll go ahead to the object browser so you see it allows you to create a new filter quick filter it allows you to create a new library it allows you to go to a specific file directly it allows you to sort highlight refresh and collapse everything so what we'll do is we'll create a new filter so filter is like doing work obj or work member pdm so the filter name will give uh, my own library name okay so simple can have star and regex can have even more complicated filtering criteria we'll give our own library name over here objects would have all the objects so what do we want to see we want to see a list of source physical files we'll keep it as it is if you want to see all the objects then you can do star all so we'll just go ahead and uh, change this name to my library source or i'll just write a short write it in short form srcf source physical file srcpf okay so we're not having any filter on members let's save it it has created one filter now let's expand it and uh, look at what all is available so yeah so we now have my library binande1 and all the source physical files are available so if we look at the rpg le src we'll see that you should get the hello world rpg le source code takes a little bit of time to load i think we need to optimize it in some ways to make it faster let's see how we can do it so we get our hello world code for rpgle for c plus plus also we have our hello world c plus plus code which we wrote in the hello world video let's go to the udssrc and uh, 
we should get the list of logical files we have been working on logical file and physical file so here we have a logical file so this is not it apart from the object browser ifs browser we have other things so we have terminals also so it allows you to open terminals where you can execute commands a pass terminal or a 5250 terminal so if you click on 5250 yeah here we go so you can log in as you did log in before on the IBM I access client solutions you get the same tab available to you over here so if you just rearrange it you get the you get to see the complete tab you'll be able to execute commands in this so you can work on your AS400 like you did from here you can also start a pass terminal a pass terminal as we explored before allows you to execute the commands unix like or linux like commands on as400 so you have terminals that you can work on actions will give you a list of actions on what all is available so you can create programs you can compile you can delete there are a lot of other things which we'll explore later on in the further videos and of course there is settings and there is a lot of other documentation to go through which we will go through in one of the next videos so that is all for today thank you for watching bye bye